Welcome to our worship service on All Saints. Again, I'm Pastor Dan Yeiser, the interim pastor here at St. David's, and it's my privilege, indeed, to bring you these IT services, being our Lord's servant in touching you with the word of our Lord, the gospel. So I do look forward to these services each week as I look forward to the in-person services as well. Something about All Saints. All Saints is a festival in the church year. It always falls on November 1st. We celebrate it either on November 1st or the first Sunday, the closest Sunday to November 1st, and it always falls lows the Reformation. Reformation Day itself is October 31st, celebrated at the latest on October 31st, or on a Sunday before October 31st, the closest one to the 31st, which was the case this year when we celebrated on October 30th. So now November 6th, we've come to the All Saints Sunday. A little bit about this Sunday. In holy baptism, God makes saints out of sinners. It's God's work, not ours. In Holy Communion, God forgives the sins of all the saints. In worship today, we give thanks for the saints who from their labors rest. In the same breath, we petition our God for the strength to hear and heed the admonitions of Jesus in today's gospel lesson, which is comprised of the Beatitudes from Luke's gospel. Sealed by the Spirit and sustained by the Savior's body and blood, we live with joy as God gives us breath to the praise of God's glory. Again, it is good to have you with us today. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who gives away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The Gospel of the Lord. And let us pray. Lord God, you call us to an amazing responsibility as Christians. And may we be people that take these Beatitudes seriously. People who act in love towards others. People who care about others. People who are willing to deny ourselves for the sake of the common good. Lord, we thank you for the incredible privilege that we have to serve as your disciples in this world. May we always turn to your spirit in prayer, seeking guidance and strength as we carry on the work with which we have been blessed. Amen. When talking with folks from other Christian denominations, maybe folks who are interested in joining the Lutheran Church, I stress that as Lutherans, our doctrine is best summed in two phrases. One, that we are justified by grace through faith on account of Christ. Two, we are all part of the priesthood of believers, made priests in the waters of holy baptism. Last Sunday, of course, as I mentioned in the announcements, was Reformation Sunday, which easily lent itself to a sermon in which we talked about justification by grace through faith. It was Luther's strong conviction that we are saved by the grace of God. That there's nothing that we can do to earn our way into heaven. That it's a gift given to us because of what Christ did for us on the cross. And we appropriate that gift. We say thank you for that gift. We live in that gift through the faith with which we have been blessed by the Holy Spirit. Today's festival, All Saints, easily lends itself to a discussion of the second key doctrinal statement of Lutheranism, that we are all part of the priesthood of believers. So we see then that when we put these two festival days together, that they easily lend themselves to a two-part topical sermon, or maybe a one-part one sermon in two parts in which we are given the opportunity to preach about both of these key doctrinal statements in Lutheranism. What we're talking about in Lutheran theology is really privilege and responsibility. This is election time right out here in our country. This Tuesday is a very big day as we hit the midterm election. Voting is a privilege, 
and a responsibility for U.S. citizens. Not all people in the world and in their various countries have the privilege to vote. So with that privilege comes the attendant responsibility that we exercise our privilege to vote. Likewise, in baptism, we become Christians and receive privilege and responsibility. Privilege to be forgiven and offered eternal life. How did Luther put it in the small catechism and holy baptism? We receive the forgiveness of sins, deliverance from death and the devil, and everlasting salvation. That's offered to all who believe in what God has promised. This is all because of Christ's death and resurrection, pro nobis, as they say in Latin, for us for you and for me. So that as people who are infinitely blessed, we have the responsibility to live life, which is befitting of God's children. And just to be able to do that, to live a life of responsibility as God's children, when you really think about it, is a privilege in and of itself, to be sure. This privilege and responsibility goes along with being a saint. But what is a saint? When you hear the word saint, who do you think of? A biblical character? Maybe one of the New Testament writers? A great early church leader? A pope? A loved one? Who do you think of? But the truth is, we're all saints, made saints in the waters of holy baptism. Now, don't let it go to your head that you're a saint because you, like me, are also sinners. That great phrase in the resurrection, Massimo Eustis et Peccator, meaning basically simultaneously just and sinner. And that's what we are as people. That's what we are as Christians. Again, we become saints in the waters of holy baptism. This means that we're made God's children and we receive an incredible privilege as such with an attendant responsibility. As saints, we're part of the priesthood of all believers. This means that we're part of the Christian community we have in common that we're blessed and we're called. We're called to share the good news through our words and deeds. This means ministering. We're all ministers. Have you ever thought of yourself as being a minister or a priest? Now, this doesn't mean that we're all ordained, that all of us wear the clerical collar, but we're still all called to do God's work in the world. In ways and through the means with which we are blessed by God. But as priests, ministers, or saints, we're called to live in the new covenant, to view our Christianity as a vocation or as a way of life, which entails loving God and others, trusting God, as we talked about last week in our sermon, exercising our faith here in church and also out there in the world. We're called to do good works, not to earn our salvation, as we said last week, but because we're told to. That should be reason enough. God has told us to do good things. And it is certainly a proper response for those who wear the name Christian blazoned on our chests. The Holy Spirit, thanks be to God, gives us the power to do these things, enables us to be Christian disciples. This Holy Spirit also moves us to be good stewards. As I said in a sermon not too long ago, our discipleship is not done in a vacuum, but rather through the time, talents, and treasures with which we have been blessed. 
As saints, we do well to serve God with our three T's. You know, the existential question of the day seems to be, who am I? We Christians answer that question by asking another question. Whose am I? Or to whom do I belong? You and I are children of God. We're loved, forgiven, saved, called, enlightened, and sent. Blessed are we, saints and sinners, blessed with the privilege and the responsibility to serve as God's disciples today. Thanks be to God. Amen. United with your saints, across time and place, we pray for our shared world. Holy One, your church rests on the faithful who came before us. Give bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders the will to carry the church forward and discern your will for the future. Lord, in your mercy, Receive our prayer. Holy One, the earth is yours and all that dwells within it. Care for places ravaged by natural disasters, quell raging fires, and halt destruction caused by flooding. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Holy One, you raise up leaders to guide your people. Kindle in them a passion to care for others a desire to seek the common good and the courage to love their enemies. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Holy One, you bless those who are poor, hungry, and reviled. Provide food, housing, and security to all who are vulnerable or in crisis. May those who have more than enough give generously. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Holy One, hold us in community with one another. Nurture a spirit of abundant hospitality and intentional inclusion among us, welcoming the gifts of adults and children. Inspire creative visions for our life together. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Holy One, we remember in thanksgiving all those who have died. Dave Barnhart, Kiki Byers, Nevin Garrett Sr., 
Anne Hemfing, Arlene Kopp, Margie Utz, Betty Albright, Barry Bainey, Beatrice Barreto, Paul Brown, Paul Zapp, Russell Garrett, Mary Gilbert, Martha Grigsby, John Groft, Brian Groft, Reverend David Hawk, Mary Marker Krauss, Ruth Krauss, Jack Krauss, Eric Krauss, Mary Louise Kronsteiner, Helen Long, Jason Mahone, Henry Martin, Sally McClintock, Bill Miller, Thomas G. Phillips, Reverend Patricia Pride, Daryl Robinstein, Lois Ann Smith, Shirley Smith, Bob Snyder, Dolores Snyder, Tom Sollers, Wayne Starner, Leah Strassball, Edgar Strassball, Betty Warner, C. Daniel Weber, Norma Womack, Gerald Zumbrum. Wipe away our tears and comfort us with the promise of everlasting life in you. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our well, Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.